All right, we're going to talk about creating depth in a two-dimensional image. It's a drawing or a painting, something that actually has no real depth but to create the illusion of depth. We're going to talk about six ways. There are more than this, but these are the, the six um, uh, most basic beginning ways that we can try to look at depth to create depth and when we're looking at art to see how they are creating depth. So um, let's just get started. The first method is by overlapping objects. So here you see we have a circle and a square and you can tell that it's hard to tell which one is closer to the to the viewer. You might think the square is a little bit brighter in color that might make it appear closer. Um, the circle is a little bit warmer in color that might make it appear closer. Um, but we're not really going to talk about color and and depth quite yet. But um, if I overlap them, like so, then you can really tell that the circle is definitely in front of the square. right? So let's take a look at a couple of examples of overlap. Here you can see um, definitely how it's used in both photography and art uh, to show objects that are clearly in front of each other and objects that are clearly behind others. The next set uh, is size here. So uh, size just means that if something looks farther away, it appears smaller. So here, these two circles appear, appear the same distance away, but if I make one of them smaller, then the smaller one appears farther away. Now this would only work with objects of similar size, that exist in similar size in real life. So if you're using two, two spheres <coughs> excuse me, of similar size, then um, that looks smaller. But if you take things that are normally um, a big difference in size, like say one image is of a house and another image is of a bread box. With that, even if the if the if you make the bread box uh, uh, small and in front of the house, the house is so much bigger than the bread box that it's going to be hard to tell distance with size. This really only works with objects of similar size. So um, here's some examples of the way size is used. You can see things that are, the, the spheres that are smaller in the background, they get, um, they feel like they're farther away. The next one we're going to talk about is clarity. Um, clarity goes by several different names. Sometimes it's called atmospheric perspective. Um, sometimes it's called depth of field. Um, but in general, the idea is that when something gets farther away, it becomes less clear. That could mean it's more blurry. It could mean it's um, more fuzzy compared to the background color. So here, these two circles appear the same distance. But if I make one darker, a little bit of a fuzzier edge, it starts to appear farther away. So let's look at a couple of examples there. So here's clarity, and we see here two examples where as the pair gets farther and farther away, it becomes less and less clear, it gets darker and darker. And on the mountains, or the cliffs here on the, at the ocean, they get lighter and lighter as they get closer um, to, the, to the background, or to the rear of the picture. But also notice that it's not about getting lighter and lighter or darker and darker. The pairs actually get darker and darker. The cliffs get lighter and lighter. It's all about becoming less clear and more like your background color. Position is another thing that really shows depth, and it's one that a lot of people don't think of. And that's this idea that we typically look down on things, um, especially in landscapes. We typically don't look up at a landscape unless it's, at, unless it's clouds. But most objects we see in landscapes are from looking from the top down. Therefore, objects that are on the bottom appear closer, and objects on the top appear farther. So here are some, some examples. Here you see three cars. The one on the bottom is definitely closer, the one on top definitely farther away. Definitely it's apparent in these uh, rolling hills. The hills on the bottom are closer, the hills on the top are farther away. Even if um, one on top is actually bigger in size, it will definitely think that it's farther away because it's higher up in the picture. 
Linear perspective, this is a very basic view of linear perspective. You can really get go deep into how to do linear perspective. But the basic idea is that if you have objects that all line up and point towards um, a single vanishing point or a single point, then they appear to get smaller and smaller in the distance. So here's the example. If we draw some lines of perspective and a vanishing point and we make those rectangles follow those lines, then they, those rectangles will appear to get smaller and smaller and smaller into the distance. It's not just about them getting smaller, but it's all about them lining up along these perspective lines. So let's take a look at some pictures that use this idea. Here's some railroad tracks that dis disappear off into a tunnel behind the vanishing point. Again, here's a, another rows of buildings rows of uh, telephone poles, railroad tracks, all moving back and disappearing at a single vanishing point. And here is a perspective design done by a student and uh, these lines um, make the name really pop out and look like it goes all the way back almost an infinite distance. So a very very basic concept of how to use perspectives if you're writing your name like for a name tag or for your for your portfolio or whatever it is that you want want to put going back in perspective if you want to do lettering this is a very very basic way and that is just to move the letters onto the perspective lines so each letter gets slightly smaller and smaller and smaller then you could remove the vanishing point and um, the letters would look like they're moving off into the distance. The next one we're talking about is shadows. So here we're going to show you a circle. Um, this circle looks flat, like a flat disk, but if we add shading and shadows, it will appear three-dimensional. So here we've got a highlight on it, we've got a shadow side on it, and it really makes that circle look like a sphere just by adding some bright spots and some dark spots right and I can make it look even more like a shadow or even more like a three-dimensional object by adding a cast shadow the cast shadow really pushes the the sphere off of the background makes it look like it's resting on top of something and really gives it a full three-dimensional shape so here we have our six ways to create depth. And I'd like you to do a project where you show all six ways, and including overlap, size, clarity, position, linear perspective, and shadows. Now when you're creating your project, and you're, I want you to put letters on this project, there's one important thing to remember when you're doing letters um, in perspective, trying to show depth, and that is that letters cannot be drawn with just single lines like this. The problem with a letter with just a single line is that lines don't really, unless they're really thick fat lines, don't really um, have the ability to show much depth. And I'll see what I, show you what I mean. If I overlap this with another letter, here's another T, you'll see that it's really impossible to tell which, was in, which one is in front, right? Is the, one on the right in front, the one on the bottom in front, the top in front, which one is it? You can't tell if you're just drawing with lines. In contrast, if I give a letter with some thickness to it, I can add another letter with thickness and then it becomes absolutely clear which letter is in front, which is the blue one. So for our project, this is what I would like to see. Use six ways to create depth. That's size, overlap, position, clarity, perspective, and shadows. And um, I really need you to make sure you use letters with some thickness to them. You don't have to really make like um, three-dimensional letters um, if you don't want to. You can as an option, but that's kind of another lesson altogether. This is just a basic introduction into creating depth. I do want you to try to cover the entire paper, so I don't want to have a little design in one part of the paper and leaving the whole rest of the paper left untouched. I really want you to really fill the paper with different ways of creating depth. We're going to be coloring this with color pencils, 
and most importantly, be creative. I'm really giving you a lot of leeway in terms of what to do. Yeah. The only thing I'm telling you is you have to do letters with thickness. Other than that, you can draw anything. You can make it a landscape scene. You can make it um, any kind of three-dimensional space, right, that really has some depth. Um, I would like it if you try not to um, create examples of depth that contradict each other. For example, um, you could create uh, one where you have the position of it shows that it's farther away because it's higher up, but then the clarity of it shows that it's closer. So then they, those two things would conflict with each other. So try to avoid um, conflicting methods of, of creating depth and really have the different ways of creating depth really support each other and that'll make the depth appear even greater and may give it an even better illusion of depth. Alright, so good luck on this project and um, have fun with it. <laughs>